because we're not doing acupuncture. I couldn't find anybody to speak on acupuncture, so they had a new uh, subject come in. So I have to say, with Mrs. Uh, Manning's talk, when we were all very quiet and we were focusing on the noise in the room, I didn't hear a single person cough, which was amazing to me, especially in this population. So um, today we get to talk about cough. My name's Wendy. I'm a nurse practitioner right here at Vanderbilt Medical Center, so right down the street. I've been working with patients who have IPF and interstitial lung disease now since 2001, since the interimmune trials. So thrilled to see you all here. And you know what? Why don't we make a great big loud applause to the PFF right now for doing this here in Nashville. Right? So glad that they are able to do this kind of thing for us. So we're going to talk about cough, and, and I want this to be an interactive discussion, okay? You guys are really affected with cough, despite the fact that it was quiet in here earlier and we didn't hear any of that. So I really want to hear from you. You guys are the best answers to this, the questions that we have about cough. It's really hard for me. To, oh, it's right here. I was like, I can't even see that, and here it is right here. So what, what makes you cough? Right? That's very simple. Something in your body that you have breathed in, dripped in, or regurgitated into your lungs has irritated your airways and now you've got to get it out. Right? So that's typically what makes us cough. We got something that's bothering us on the inside and we need to get it out. That's not a bad thing to suppress. <laughs> right? So sometimes cough medicines or different things that we use to give people to suppress their cough takes that ability to get stuff out away from us. So it's very important that we figure out why people are coughing to make sure, do we really need to suppress this urge to cough? Cough, as you know, can be voluntary or involuntary. Cough is completely um, kind of a neurological thing that our body does. We get this irritant inside us, um, we follow these pathways that go to our brain and tell our bodies to to convulse, so to speak, to get this out. You can have an acute cough or a chronic cough. Acute cough is simply something that's kind of short-lived. So what would be an example of, of an acute cough, one reason that you would have an acute cough? Bronchitis. So you're going to live with your bronchitis. You're going to cough while you have your bronchitis. When your bronchitis goes away, hopefully, the cough does too, right? So sometimes it can be infectious. Sometimes it could be non-infectious. So what would be like a non-infectious cough that would be short-lived? Allergies, very good. So you have these allergies, maybe seasonal allergies that come along. Right now, here in Tennessee, we go through the fall. Everybody kind of goes through sling and snot, having allergies during the fall, and then we cough, and then it goes away. Um, chronic cough is a different animal though. Chronic cough lasts with us for eight weeks or longer. And those are the, the kind of cough we, we really need to scratch our head and figure out what's going on with patients who have chronic cough. So here's quite an example of um, some causes of cough. Some of these can be acute. Some of these can be chronic. So as you see, pneumonia, that's really more of an acute cough problem, right? common cold, whooping cough. We've all heard people probably with pertussis and whooping cough. Post-nasal drip can cause you to cough. Different medicines, namely which one? What's that? Blood pressure medicines, specifically the ACE inhibitors. So if you're on something that ends in prill and you're coughing, we need to remember to look at that. Exercise can make you cough. Does that mean you should not exercise? That's kind of what a lot of people think, but um, you need to exercise. How many people in here can talk and just the act of talking will make you cough? I know that's a common problem with people that have pulmonary fibrosis. Um, different exposures can cause you to cough. Ever walk into a room and somebody's got like a bad perfume on, or maybe it's good perfume, I don't know, but just that extra scent in the, in the air can trigger your cough response. Or maybe it's pet dander, or different types of molds or dusts or things like this. So it's not just things that are in our environment that can cause cough, different medical problems can cause us to cough as well, right? 
So it's, it is, continues to be our job to make sure we're figuring out why you're coughing so that we can appropriately treat your cough. Asthma is a huge um, contributor to cough. Obstructive sleep apnea can contribute to cough, surprisingly. Different cancers out there, specifically lung cancer, but cancers can cause you to cough. Gastroesophageal reflux disease. I imagine you guys have sat through um, a lecture already about gastroesophageal reflux disease, and I believe we're speaking about that tomorrow. That is, a, that is another big proponent for um, cough, and I'll mention it here again here in just a moment. Congestive heart failure. You get an extra fluid buildup in your lungs, that'll make you cough. Sometimes just your heart getting enlarged can make you cough and different lung diseases. As you all know, interstitial lung disease can cause a dry, hacky cough. In some patients, a wet cough. And then how many of you, especially those of you that are on oxygen, can tell when your saturations are down because you're coughing? I see that a lot in our practice that people tend to cough when their oxygen sats get low. So, home remedies. These are a few lists, and what I really want you guys to talk to each other about are different home remedies that can ease your cough. Just, you know, how many times are you, you sitting in a restaurant or something and you're coughing and somebody wants to bring you a glass of water or a glass of warm, warm tea? So honey, hot water, teas, put some lemon in your water, those kind of things can tend to soothe your cough. Of course, over-the-counter cough drops. I'm not a big fan of cough drops at all. And why is that? Why do you think that is? Well, it can be a choker. I don't even think about that. Isn't that funny? Yeah, I think about that maybe with kids, but I don't even think about choking. It's sugar, yes. So your diabetes, you get problems with diabetes, uh, weight. You, what'd you say? Yes, you can find them sugar-free, absolutely. But you need to pay attention that every one of those um, things you put in your mouth, any one of those lozenges come with calories, and you're right, you can find them sugar-free. A lot of times patients, I can have a patient in a room and they'll pop through three cough drops. That might be a hundred calories they put in just in a small amount of time. So it can contribute with sugar control, weight, your teeth, rotting your teeth out. Um, Over-the-counter cough remedies. So, you know, NyQuil contains dextromethorphan, Different things like that can absolutely help with cough. Um, one of my patients always took NyQuil, swug NyQuil, NyQuil or DayQuil all the time. Or, you know, simply avoid the exposure. If smoking makes you cough, quit smoking. If, um, if, if your cat, unfortunately, how much you might like your cat, if your cat's causing you to cough, the cat needs to go to a friend's house or something like that. So get those things out of your life that are contributing to your cough. So what are some of the things you guys use that might not be on this list that you would kind of consider a homeopathic or a, a home remedy? Nobody's coughing in here. What's that? Just relax. Yes, and when she was talking about mindfulness and we were all kind of going to that place, it was funny, one of the other things she said too was, feel your feet in your shoes. I'm like, my shoes are off. <laughs> but. Um, but yeah, you know, sometimes when you just relax, th go through one of those mindfulness techniques when you're having a coughing attack. Sometimes patients can have a bad coughing attack, and sometimes those coughing attacks can make you feel like, this is it, I'm not going to be able to recover from this. So finding that, going to that place, mindfulness, settling down, listening to the things in the room. Um, anybody else have any other kind of ideas for home remedies for cough? I think those downy, feathery things can certainly contribute to an allergen. So um, a lot of times when we know that patients have interstitial lung disease and we're trying to look for things to get out of their environment, one of the things we want to get out of your environment is those downy um, comforters, a down pillow, things like that. So those things can help ease, you know, getting rid of those things can certainly help ease cough. So let's look at the next thing here. Let's treat your cough. So the, the worst thing I could do is look at somebody and say, oh, you're coughing and you have IPF. That's probably the reason for your cough, okay? I need to really dive a little deeper and make sure 
that your cough isn't caused by one of these other things, all right? So do you have an infection somewhere that's brewing? Sometimes people can have very difficult infections to treat or lung infections to treat, and we need to make sure that we're appropriately treating whatever infection you have. So get your infection taken care of with antibiotics or, or steroids or whatever it, it needs to be to treat your infection, get rid of that thing. If you're on an ACE inhibitor, about one out of every 20 people on those ACE inhibitors will experience cough. So if you're coughing and it's a dry, hacky cough, one of the first things I'm gonna do is look at your med list and if you have an ACE inhibitor on board, something that ends typically in Pril, I'm gonna see if we can't switch that over to a different medicine to control your blood pressure. That might completely get rid of your cough. What if you have gastroesophageal reflux disease? So sometimes people say, well, Wendy, I don't have, I don't have GERD because I don't have heartburn. Okay, I don't feel it. I call that noisy GERD because I can feel that. A lot of times you can have silent GERD. Microaspiration, it doesn't burn. Or, nor does non-acid reflux. So you can have either of those things going on in your body. Those things are spilling up, up high in your esophagus and spilling down into your lungs, irritating your lungs. You don't have the burn, so you think, I don't have reflux disease, why do I need to take this PPI? I want you to take a PPI and let's see if we get rid of this cough, all right? Sleep apnea, if you've been diagnosed with sleep apnea or maybe you have a cough, maybe you need to go get a sleep study done and let's treat your sleep apnea appropriately with CPAP or BiPAP and see if that'll um, help your cough. Congestive heart failure, take your medicines as you're supposed to and keep your fluid bounce balances in place and make sure that you don't gather a bunch of fluid on your lungs. And of course, hypoxia. So if you have an order for oxygen, you got that order for oxygen for a reason, right? So your saturations are dropping, we need you to wear your oxygen as prescribed. Many times you'd be surprised at how much that really helps people's cough. But getting to the meat of it, what can we do? So I've ruled out all of those things that can cause your cough. What can I do to help treat your cough? Unfortunately, if you have idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and many times even the other types of fibrotic lung diseases, I don't have a lot of ammunition. So conventional antitussives or Tessalon pearls, how many of you tried Tessalon pearls? Do they work for you? <laughs> that was like a resounding no. Well, I'm gonna try it anyway. Any of um, our patients from Vanderbilt here that struggle with cough know that I'm gonna try you on those antitussives. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna enlist your spouse to help me with this. So if you've ever heard me tell you, I'm gonna give you the full dose of your Tessalon pearls, 200 milligrams, three times a day. And I want you to do it for two solid weeks. Two weeks later, I want a phone call and I wanna hear from your spouse and you is your cough better? You may say, no, it's no better, I'm still coughing. And your spouse will say, I don't know where you are because I don't hear you coughing anymore, okay? I learned that, I'm, I'll answer your question here in just a minute. I learned that lesson from a patient of mine who was blind in one eye. His wife was blind in both. So between the two of them, they had one eye. And when I was talking to her about, or when I was talking to my patient about his cough and having treated him with Tessalon pearls, that's what, exactly what he said. I still cough. And she piped up and she said, I don't know where you are in the house anymore. You don't cough anymore. So that taught me a valuable lesson. Enlist, my, enlist the spouse. They're always listening to that. And that cough might have been what got you drugged to the doctor's office in the first place because you got tired of listening to it. So um, enlist your spouse in helping you understand if your cough is improving. But in all truth, Tessalon pearls really only help maybe 10 to 20% of the time. So you had a question? They are very expensive, right? That's why I only give about two weeks. That's horrible, yes ma'am.
Well, that's usually the dose. It's one pill every eight hours. So I usually do 200 milligrams every eight hours for a full. But you can take, Teslon pearls can be taken PRN or as needed when it works in people, right? But yes, Teslon pearls aren't cheap. They used to be, I believe, but now they're not and they're not covered. Um, so we only give a small dose to see if it's going to be effective. So the second thing you could try is low-dose prednisone. Anybody want to be on that for any length of time? Not me. I don't want to be on it. Prednisone gives you a lot of problems. Um, it can give you a lot of problems. And as uh, Josh spoke earlier, um, you know, contributes to diabetes, high blood pressure, bone loss, all kinds of things. So prednisone may help with cough sometimes, but I'm not typically going to prescribe it, and nor am I going to keep patients on it at all. There was a study, and you can see the, uh, the author there is Dr. Horton. There was a study with thalidomide done several years ago. Um, a single center study had some effect on cough. Look at that. Only 20% of the patients could complete the study because of the bad side effects, um, significant bad side effects associated with thalidomide. We're not going to use that either. So there's three medicines we're not going to use or I haven't been shown to work. You all know that nintenidib and perfenidone have been approved by the FDA to treat cough. What? No, it hadn't. It hadn't been true to keep, treat cough. It's been approved to treat idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. But they are looking at perfenidone to see if it helps cough. There's been a couple of studies that are published, and those references are there. These studies were done in, um, one was done in Japan, the other one was done in the Netherlands that showed there was some benefit. Patients did report some benefit with cough. To my knowledge, there's not been any studies done with nintenidib that have been published on cough yet. Um, the gabapentin study was actually done in 2012, not 2013, and that did show some effect on cough. So if you're one of our patients and your Tessalon didn't work for your cough, the next thing I'm going to do is prescribe some gabapentin. Low-dose gabapentin is also called Neurontin. Um, what did I say earlier that cough was? It's a neural thing, right? It's a neuro thing. Gabapentin is the medicine that's approved to treat peripheral neuropathy. So gabapentin can act on those, those nerves somehow. It's all kind of words that are over my head, but I can give you 300 milligrams of, of Neurontin or gabapentin and see if that helps. After a few weeks, if you find that that doesn't help, I might add a second pill to that. And for the most part, for most of our patients that are troubled with cough, this has been pretty beneficial for them. So what's out there in the future for clinical trials with cough? Um, I want you guys to pay attention to that AF219. Exciting study. 75% drop in cough frequency and only 17% of the people had to come off of because of AT, um, adverse events. So this drug, um, AF stands for afferent, um, 219. I believe afferent sold this drug to Merck, if I'm not mistaken, and Merck holds this drug now. So waiting for the next studies to come out on this drug. So we participated in this trial at Vanderbilt, and the way this trial was designed is you got to take, you were randomized, to either get the true drug or placebo for two weeks. After two weeks of whatever you were assigned, you came off of therapy and took a rest, so to speak, and then you went back on therapy for two weeks, getting assigned the other drug. So it's a crossover. Every patient got to take true drug or placebo at one point. When we gave the drug, we are blinded too. We don't know what we're giving you, except for the fact first dose with most all of our patients stop their cough. Now we didn't prescribe this to the people that say, yeah, Wendy, I cough all the time and I never hear them cough in the office. I waited and offered this drug to pe or this drug trial to people that I was seeing in the clinic who were coughing all the time during their appointment, who were getting in their bag and digging out those cough drops just so they could finish a sentence. Those are the people that we offered this drug to. When sometimes when you have a symptom like that, the people that can benefit the most from recovering from a symptom are the people that struggle the most with that symptom. So we offered that trial, and I'm telling you, one dose of that medicine and their cough went away. Problem was, you know, you got, you got the good, you gotta, you gotta tell about the bad, right? The, the main side effect associated with this drug is taste disturbance. 
and some of the patients actually came back to me and said, I'd rather cough. Water tasted like oil. So now I believe what they're going to do with this drug study is bring the dose of the drug down, see if that still effectively controls the cough, but also gets rid of that taste disturbance. All right? Um, it was an exciting study. Patients had to be on a, a tape recorder three times. So before they took first dose, they had to wear a tape recorder for 24 hours. So I would tease with them if, if any of you are familiar with the Vanderbilt campus. Um, the study nurse that works with me is Jim Del Greco, great big tall guy, and I would always tell patients, don't say anything bad about Jim, <laughs> because we're going to tape record everything you say. So um, anyway, that's just kind of a joke between us all. But you'd have to wear a tape recorder for 24 hours, and then you'd wear it again at week one and again at week two. And this is, so it wasn't just a patient diary where the patient recorded their cough. This was true readings of how many times people were coughing or clearing their throat in the study. So watch for that drug to come out in more phase two or phase three research, because I think that's really going to go somewhere, especially if we can get rid of that side effect of, of taste problems. If you go on clinicaltrials.gov and you Google cough and pulmonary fibrosis or refractory cough, look at all the different things you get. You get a lot of different studies that are coming up. So azithromycin, there's a Glaxo drug, there's the AF219, there's some anti-reflux surgery studies going on to see if that can control cough. And looky there, there's supplemental oxygen, looking to see if really does supplemental oxygen help control cough. Omeprazole, of course, is there to help our, our um, non-acid and acid GERD components. That cognitive behavioral therapy is actually speech therapy. So speech therapy is often offered for people who struggle with cough. Whoop, I guess that's the last of it. If you notice, one thing that I didn't mention was what? What? Yes, the big drugs, the narcotics. Do we give narcotics for cough? We will when it starts affecting quality of life. I did not put it in the slide up there because I don't want people to think that, that that's an automatic go-to. I think there's other things we can try first. But I will prescribe um, Tussinex or the, hydro, um, the narcotic cough syrup only when needed for patients who are struggling. Usually if it's affecting quality of life, specifically sleep, we'll give it um, uh, for a dose at night only. So you all have been wonderful. Does anybody have any questions about cough? Yes, ma'am. That's probably specific for every, you know, for different centers about being off of narcotics. So I don't know if that's a, if that's a national or a global thing, but your center may require that. Yes, sir. What about low-grade bacterial infections, lungs, uh, where they're, they're just below a baseline where, you know, because there's so much scarring and damaging your lungs, that it's persistent. Yes. And, then you're not, and not being recognized. Right, so have you had um, you know, lung washings or BALs done that show continued um, in, um, microbials in your lungs? So typically, if we can't find a, a booger to treat, so to speak, we're not gonna treat it. But a lot of times, you, know, you do have scarring in your lungs and it is hard to lift those things up. Um, sometimes we prescribe, um, oh, what are they called, the acapella device to kind of rattle things up in your lungs and help you cough up those things that might be stuck down there. We call it an acapella, right? Is that what we call it? Yes. Those things will help bring things forward. Yes, ma'am. I don't know um, where this information comes from, but on like our IPF Facebook page, people have been talking about the cough is related to uh, I guess the lungs have no nerves that recognize pain, and it's just a response to pain, and so that's what the cough is from, is from pain. Have you ever heard of anything like that? No, I don't, I don't believe that IPF is a painful diagnosis. Now, there might be some people that have pain, but I don't believe that well, cough... I mean, I mean the, they, they say they don't feel any pain. It's just a natural response of the lungs because there's some discomfort there's inside some the lungs. Anti, there's some inflammation going on. That okay. could be true. I had not I, heard I that. I just have been reading it, and I thought I'd ask since you were here. Thank you. You're welcome. Question. Yes? Cannabis? I have not prescribed it. No, sir. 
not here in Tennessee. Um, I have two things. One of them was the uh, azathi azathioprine. Is that the same thing as azathiamycin? No, that's azithromycin. That's an antibiotic. Oh. Well, the other thing is I want to say I think I'm going to move to Nashville because I've hardly coughed since I've been here. Really? Yeah. Have you been and my here sister during allergy season? She goes, you haven't been coughing. I really, I mean, I've coughed a little bit, but so not yeah, it could totally coughs. be something that was in your environment where you were, whether it was in your home or whether it was a seasonal um, allergy thing or something like that. It's it's amazing to me how things that are in our everyday um, can really affect how we breathe. Um, so I've heard that before, where people have moved from one home to the other and their cough is gone. That happened with me. I used to be, if any of you are familiar with um, the Vanderbilt campus, we have a building on campus called Medical Center North, and it was the original medical school. It's a 100-year-old it's a building, and I was housed over there. And I would go through a whole box of Kleenex from blowing my nose and coughing all the time in a month, moved over to the Vanderbilt Clinic. My office is there now, and I never cough. So there's triggers and things. Molds, especially, I think are very, are very bad for us. I have tried to use uh, aromatherapy at home, and my husband thinks that it irritates him. Are you fam aware of that? Any problems with? I don't know using that. Oils? So you're using aromatherapy at home, and your husband's worried that that might make you worse. It's him, and perhaps makes him cough more. So yeah. I've, I've stopped using. That's correct. Yeah, that would be one of those irritants in the air that you're allowing that stuff to get in the air, and it certainly could irritate him and make his cough worse. Now, I want to I want to mind you that I don't believe that's making his fibrosis worse. Okay, it's making his cough worse. It's an irritant. Is it worthwhile using air purifiers in your house? Is it worthwhile to have what? Air purifiers. Air purifiers, that's been another thing. If, if you feel like that helps you, then absolutely have an air purifier in the home. I would avoid things like humidifiers. Now listen to everybody in here's coffee. Um, I would avoid humidifiers because those, those have to be cleaned and those tend to grow mold, but I don't think there's anything wrong with pu purifiers. Now there was a period, if you remember, several years ago the big thing was ozone. Um, treatment. So we kind of avoided those things too and told patients because we didn't understand them well to avoid those things. But I think the air purifiers are okay. Nebulizers can, can irritate, irritate your um, bronchial tubes as well. So, you know, it's funny, on any of those asthma drugs that you breathe in that you're treating for cough, one of the number one side effects is cough, so it's really just a matter of how well you're able to do it and if it triggers your cough, but those have all been known to, to contribute to cough as well. Yes, ma'am. Do you cough frequently? Yeah, so do you cough frequently? I mean, it, it kind of becomes a toll on the body, I think. It really does. And like I said, it can affect your quality of life. Like you were saying, it can make your back hurt. It makes gives you headaches. It can contribute to your sleep. So um, it can be a spousal irritant, but, um, but it does become quite, quite hard on the patient. I'm being told. Oh, you have I a question. Just, I just wanted to follow up on the question regarding air purifiers. Um, yes, it has been recommended by some experts to use air purifiers, but there are so many different brands and types of air purifiers, and something that you should bear in mind and avoid are those pur purifiers that says ionizing and those that, uh, machines that says ozone generators because they release a lot of ozone, and ozone is an air pollutant that can also irritate your airways and can contribute to more coughing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions? You know, when you listen to everybody cough, it always, cough is one of those things that if somebody's coughing, you tend to cough too. I always say that's the, 
That's a troublemaker. One of the things that bothers me is uh, uh, humidity in the summer. Mm -hmm. So when it comes fall and I start using my uh, humidifier on my CPAP, I noticed that this time that I was coughing a lot. So I had to turn that humidifier down to its lowest level because okay. that humidity in my lungs caused me to cough. Yeah. So uh, I didn't realize that until I realized that summer with humidity was bad for me. Right. And that's very interesting because some people are troubled with humidity. Some people are troubled with cold air. So it's just very, you know, it's very personalized aspect of, of cough. All right. Anybody else have anything? Again, I'm thankful that you all have come to Nashville. It's great to have so many patients. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the cold. I'd like to know uh, that causes, I know causes me to cough, uh, and I find it very difficult unless I cover my mouth when it's, you know, below, say, 55 degrees. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why. There's, it does trigger, tightens things up in your chest and makes you cough. But that's the best thing to do. Cover everything up, bundle up, and keep yourself from coughing. All right. Good. Was that better than acupuncture? <laughs>